Hello and welcome everyone back to another brand new video. In today's video, we will be covering some tips and tricks on GP bikes to improve your overall braking. Now, first off, we're gonna jump into the settings tab. I'm gonna go over the advanced braking methods I have in here just to set up the controller slightly better and improve your braking before getting on track. And if you have watched the ultimate controller guide, you'll notice, but I'll just give a quick recap. I will link that video down below. That will be a much more in-depth video about this stuff. But just quickly, I'll run through this this is my front brake so this is my advanced settings you can change your dead zone linearity as you can see on the screen my linearity as you can see is 151 percent what that does it slows down the initial braking just the input is a bit more smooth and not as quick so it actually speeds up so my last bit of braking is quicker what this does just makes the initial bite which is the most important part but we'll cover that in a minute the most important part is just the initial bite because if you unsettle the bike then you kind of lose your braking then from there we're going to go down to press i have these on smooth basically as you can see on this it smooths out the input just makes it a bit more progressive and not so snappy again the suspension in this game can be very unforgiving so it is really important that the initial bite of the brake is your smoothest and kind of the most delicate part of the braking for this i have smooth on 30 for press 5 for release and the gain is your overall brake pressure so if I go to 50% you can see it can only use 50% I personally use as you can see I'm holding down the, the left trigger as you'll see by my controller overlay which will be somewhere on the screen there that I'm holding down fully this just controls how much I can use now if I go to 100 or 200 percent you can see I barely press it and I go to 100 percent I'm only half pressing the trigger so much more play you don't want this it'll make the braking too much like a button you want this the lower the better but the only thing is the lower you go you will so if i go to 85 you can only use 85. personally for me i use 98.6 is what i have on it just cuts out very small at the end uh just for me it's more of a preference thing but these are mine if you want to try it out let me know how you get on but we're going to jump onto track now and i'm going to go on to a bit more riding techniques that can improve your braking so we're going to start off just with a small bit of a setup guide just to improve and just to take away some things that you'll be doing wrong. One thing you'll want to play around with is tires. Each tire will feel different. A softer tire will flex more, which also will give a bit more of a vague feeling if it overheats. Tire pressures play a big part in your front end feel, which increases your braking confidence and also your unconfidence if it is affecting you. After you do a run, you will have your PSI here and these are your temperature gauges. If these are sky high, I would recommend adjusting your temperatures as well as maybe trying a different tire. I will be doing a more in-depth setup guide at some point, but for now I'm just going to briefly cover the brakes just to help in this video. Your front leverage is basically when you're pressing in your front brake lever, how much leverage you have is how much braking power is at the initial point and like the best way to describe it is a higher leverage is more progressive. 16 mil, which is the lowest one, is more snappy. So we have less leverage, so it's more aggressive braking. I always, always run the highest leverage possible. What that does for me, it gives me more, more of a working window for my front brakes. If I'm running on 16, I, I actually can't brake anywhere near my limit, which means I have to, I'm just giving away free lap time. For me, this is what I would consider free lap time. A lot of people will run 18, they can get away with it. I personally don't like it. I like being a bit more aggressive with the front brake, which means I run 20 um, nearly every single bike. Of course, suspension setup will really affect it too, but geez, are just big brake tips and I'm just gonna cover these for now. Your mass cylinder, unfortunately for this one, we don't have one. Higher mass cylinder will give you overall higher brake pressures through your hydraulics. Again, play around with these. I personally don't go at this as much. It's more leverage and discs. A bigger disc has a rotating mass or higher, which means the bike will want to push forward. The inertias will be different. Again, higher braking performances will come from a bigger disc, but then you have the offset of having more inertia in the corner and stuff like that. So again, for this, a lot of the times I'll go with the middle one, just best of both worlds. The higher braking performance or the less mass and the rotating forces, I usually go middle ground. And again, on the rear, you can change your, this is actually for a mass cylinder, so you can change your mass on the rear for this. And again, there's only the same list. So same things apply to these. Again, play around with these, but my personal favorite is running a higher front leverage and kind of a middle disc. 
So now we're into the fun part. I've put a few clips together here. These first two clips are at the complete stock bike, so I've made no adjustments to the brakes at all. You can see here, I can just barely get over 60% thereabouts brake pressure, and it just feels like I'm on the edge and the limit of locking the front. I don't have confidence, and um, my braking distance are a bit shorter. Now you'll see as well on the left side of the screen, you'll have a controller overlay, as well as my inputs from GP bikes. You can see just here, and to change the direction, I can only use 50-55% brake pressure it is very key when you're changing direction while braking to be smooth and kind of slow with it. You don't really want to be aggressive on the change of the direction and especially you don't want to be jaggedy on the brakes. You don't want to be pumping them. The GP bikes models don't really react well to when bikes are aggressively used. You need to be smooth and progressive. Once again here you can see just using a lot of brake pressure at the start, but this time you just want to bring off the brake as you start to tip in. The less brake you have while you're turning, the more the bike will want to turn. The opposite is if you're braking hard and you're turning, turning, the bike just won't steer. You'll see just there, use a lot of rear brake. That is just to rotate the bike at low speeds. But now we've changed the leverage and a few bits you can see now up into the high 80s maybe even the 90 percent brake pressure the bike is more steady i can brake later and i'm more responsive and i feel just more consistent on the brake once again you see just so i start to tip it in just start to release from brake i just give a small blip of the throttle just because i was afraid of the rear locking and then again a lot of rear bike just to set the bike down into the corner and once again we're going to see another version into turn one again a really smooth input up to about 75% brake and then we just hold it there and we just squeeze it ever so slightly more just to get a small bit of brake pressure out of it just to get the absolute limit of brake and again just as we step in just slowly releasing it and then bringing in the rear bike that just sets the bike down just adds a bit of lean and you can see I pick up the throttle and here we're going to continue for a few corners and uh, you will see more into turn four of exactly what I do in a couple of seconds here I have a huge moment just about now what just so I change gear but coming in here again now just watch the way pick up the brake go to about 60% 70% quite aggressively again having the controller layout with the advanced setting a bit more smooth gives me that bit of aggression in my controller inputs I can be a bit more aggressive and again just slowly releasing as you tip in and a nice chunk of rear brake just to steady the bike as it gets to full lean and once again watch where I brake go to about 50% because we're changing direction but you can see now because I have the increased leverage I can just brake a bit later as we're starting to tip in now I want the bike to turn so I'm releasing the front brake but that means it will run slightly wide so I just tap a bit of rear brake settles the bike down once again it just turns in nicer with a bit of rear brake steadies it and sets me up nicely for the corner exit and once again now the final clip you can see braking quite aggressively at full speed and that's just a bit of a full speed clip so that is it for today's video i hope you have enjoyed these tips and tricks on braking on gp bikes if you do have any questions about techniques or setup drop a comment down below and uh, i'll try to answer the questions as best you can if you did feel like today was a good video if it was helpful please consider subscribing and maybe even dropping a like. But once again, thank you all for tuning in today's video. Hope it was as helpful as possible. I shall catch you all in the not so distant future. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.